Hey bro, what's up? It's me, Sam Griffin. I heard that you want to write your own music on guitar. Sick, dog. It's a worthy endeavor. And I'm going to tell you how. I could literally just boil this whole video down into three words from my favorite footwear company, Nike. Just do it. People overthink writing music, okay? You don't need a bunch of theoretical knowledge. You don't need to learn music theory. You can start writing right now. Doesn't matter how long you've been playing guitar, doesn't matter how old you are, you could be an animal or like a dude who's 90 or, you know, like a, a demon, a demon or an archangel. You could start writing your own music. I will say though, that the better you are at guitar, the better able you will be to translate the ideas from your mind onto your fretboard. The first thing I wanna make you do, bro, is called LLC. That's right, limited liability company. Just kidding, listen, learn, and copy. The more music that you listen to, and the more you find out the kind of music and compositions you like, the more fine-tuned your taste will be. It will sort of show you what's possible and broaden your horizons. And trust me, you want those horizons as broad as they can get. Listening to music also makes your ear better just by default. Don't just listen to music, really think about the music you're listening to. Try to pick out certain instruments, try to pick out certain notes, try to notice what the bass is. Try, see if you can hear the inner voices, okay? See if you can just, you know, you know what the melody is, that's what you hear, but see if you can hear the other notes and the other stuff in there, dude. It's gonna make you better. It's gonna make you better at listening, it's gonna make you better at writing music, okay? What else did I say? Oh yeah, learn. You gotta learn music, dude. Because when you learn music, you really get in there, okay? You see, oh, physically, I'm doing this, and it creates this sound. The more stuff you learn on guitar, the better, of course, your guitar playing will be, but also you'll be kind of connecting the emotional, mental, and physical aspects of the music all together. You know, it's one thing listening to a song, but it's another thing being able to hear each individual note that makes up that chord that you like. And another thing still, to physically play that chord with your fingers and feel what that sound feels like. And see, feel like, feel what that sound sounds like when you feel it with your fingers, bro. Also, listen, when you're writing music, forget those chords, bro, and forget those scales you know, dude. That's just gonna lock you into old, dumb old patterns, man. Music doesn't have to only be the chords you know, and it doesn't have to only be the scales you know, and it doesn't have to be only the shapes that you know, or the shapes that you've ever encountered. Think of each note of a chord as like a movable block, okay? See what happens when you play a, you know, an E major chord or whatever, and you, you move one of the notes up. Play that, how does that feel? Okay, from there, move another note up. See how that feels. Mess around with things. Break those shapes that you know. Break the chain, okay? Break that wheel, my guy. You know what I'm saying? GOT reference, man. You guys remember GOT? It disappointed me almost as much as it disappoints me when people don't forget about chords and scales when they write their own music, bro. You want to try to break yourself away from guitar-y stuff or specifically stuff that you do. Like I got certain licks that I'll play in guitar like all the time. But when I'm writing music, I, I really try to veer away from the stuff that feels comfortable to me. Because if you're doing what's comfortable, you're doing stuff that's ingrained in you. So try to do stuff that feels weird. Try to do stuff that sounds weird. Really, for the most part, most music is the melody, and that's the most important thing. And then the bass, that's the next most important thing. And then anything else that's in there. Harmonization, or other little melodic lines or whatever. But that's it, man. Think of each of those elements as a separate thing. Its own living, moving entity. When you write music like that, you'll end up playing a lot less normal chord shapes that you're used to, but I guarantee you'll find things that are much more interesting than that dumb old D minor shape that you learned when you were three years old. Another great way to get good at composing is to arrange music, like I do on this channel. Arranging a piece of music is like bathing your ears and your mind in the exact kind of information you need to bathe it in to optimize your ability to hear stuff in your head and then figure out what it is on your guitar. Arranging music is very adaptive. It's like you're constantly trying to solve a problem. It's just a series of problem solving using the exact tools that you need to sharpen to get better at composing. I cannot tell you how great it's been for me in all ways to be doing these video game covers and arranging these video game covers because number one, 
they're just weird, okay? Uh, they weren't meant to be played on guitar, at least a lot of them weren't. Um, and because of that, they, they're they hard to figure out how to play on guitar. It's kind of impossible without sort of rearranging stuff, doing a little bit of composing, just the physical aspect of, here's this chord going here, and then the melody is doing this, and then figuring out how to actually put that on the fretboard. I know for sure that exposing myself to that kind of stimulus has sort of honed my ability to arrange the music that I'm hearing maybe in my head and put it on guitar. Now I've always kind of felt like there's two categories that your music composing can fall into. Number one I like to call mind to guitar. And that's when you sit there, close your eyes and you just think and you hear some kind of musical something. It doesn't have to be like a full-fledged piece of music, bro. You ain't gotta be Beethoven or Mozart or whatever. Maybe you just hear like a or whatever. And then you, you grab your guitar and you figure out, oh, where is that? Oh, here it is. See what I'm saying? Mind to guitar. Now I think the pros of this is, I think it's really good for writing melodies like this. And I think your musical intuition sort of will give you a higher chance of that thing you're humming being like actually musically viable, like actually like a nice little thing. I think the cons are that we each have certain thought pathways, even when it comes to music, are sort of calcified and you are at risk for doing the stuff that you do, okay? So if I sit there and I hum a melody, I'm gonna fall into like Sam Griffin patterns and, and it can be pretty hard to break out of that stuff. Which brings me to the other category. It's called guitar to mind. And basically what I mean by that is playing random notes on your guitar and stumbling upon something you like. That's it. I find myself doing this a lot when I'm stuck. I don't know where to go. So what I'll do is I'll play like, you know, the last five seconds, get to the point I'm stuck and then play a random note. You're basically just trying to surprise yourself with the low probability chance that you'll accidentally play something that you like. That's like, oh, that was kind of cool. Maybe I'll go there. And I find that both of these categories sort of can be used simultaneously. You might go mind to guitar, sit there, close your eyes, figure out a cool melody that you like, figure out how to play that on guitar, and then just mess around with different bass notes and see what works and what doesn't. Pecking around for, for that bass. bass note and stumbling upon something you like, that would fall under the guitar to mind method. Next thing I just need you to do, bro, is to record what you're doing either with audio, like a voice memo on your iPhone, or record it on a sheet of paper, either by writing it down or using like a tablature or notation software. Because here's the deal, there's nothing more awesome than figuring out something super rad, writing something that you like a lot, and then forgetting it next week because you forgot to practice it. Now, I prefer recording. So I like to sit down with my iPhone, pull up my voice memo app. I'll wait until I find something that I've written that I kind of like, and then I'll record it. The great thing about that is that you can immediately listen back. Sort of helps you get a more objective, third-party, zoomed out, accurate view of how that particular passage might strike the listener. Next super important thing, bro, is you gotta get some space, okay? My dad used to say, you can't taste the soup if you're swimming in that. I don't know if my dad made that up. I could probably Google that real quick but I'm not going to because I'm filming a video for YouTube right now. And what that means is it's really hard to be objective about what you're doing creatively the longer that you're staring at it. The lines sort of start to mush and blend together. There's a phenomenon that happens where if you just listen to something enough, you learn it and you know it and you just kind of like it because you know it now. You can't really at a certain point be objective about what you're working on. So when you record stuff, um, you can go back like three days later, listen to it, and you can like immediately be like, oh, that sucks, I hate that. Or you can be like, that's tight. If you could somehow write some music and then press a button and forget what you wrote, like a men in black type of, you know, thing, and then listen back to it as if for the first time, that would be so amazing and so helpful and it would make the writing process go so much faster, in my opinion. And finally, dog, you gotta finish the piece you started writing, bro. Beginnings are easy, man. Everyone's got a million beginnings, but not you, bro. You're gonna finish your music, dude. I really think that having one finished piece is worth way more than having 10 unfinished 30 second ideas. 
When you start writing a piece of music and you have zero notes written yet, you can really go anywhere from there. You can really go on an infinite amount of different directions from that spot. But the more you write, the more decisions that you make, the set of the infinite amount of possibilities that you have gets smaller. You're dealing with a smaller set of infinity and it just gets harder. The path gets narrower. There's valuable lessons that you're not gonna be able to learn unless you see a piece from start to finish, unless you get to that spot where you're fully stuck, you don't know what to do until you figure out, oh, that one little move and all of a sudden, bam, you've like opened the door again and you're flowing. That's what I want you to do, bro. I want you to finish a piece of music, bro. I want you to work on a thing until you hate it because unless you hate your music, do you really love yourself? And if you don't love yourself, how can you love me? And if you don't love me, then why are you watching this video? I and mean, clearly you do. So why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, buddy? You know, go ahead and smack that bell. Take your awesome fingers, put them on that mouse, and just cruise that little thing right over that subscribe button. Just give it a big old click. That'll make me real happy. Thanks, bro. Go write some music, okay? I'm serious. Quit making excuses. You're worth it. I believe in you. Go. I believe in you. Go forth. Go forth to victory. You're a piece of gold in a mine. You're a piece of salt in a salt mine. You're the goods. You're the stuff the miners are trying to get, okay? You're the stuff the miners are mining. You're that good stuff. You just don't know it yet, buddy. Come on, get out there. Let people know who you are. That's what I'm doing. Check me out. <laughs> Bye.